So like I mentioned in the other video that I'm actually working on concurrently right now, uh, there's been a lot of mention about this particular kit lately, a lot of discussion, a lot of speculation. As it turns out, not a whole lot of people have one, and I do. Uh, so, I mean, I might as well put it to the test, get a console built. So what this is, for those that don't know, this is the IPS kit for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, there's also a version for the Game Boy Advance SP, but what's different about this kit in particular is this is not from Funny Playing. This is from a different manufacturer. The biggest difference in this kit is that it uses this one big FPGA instead of the little MCU plus the three, um, what, like analog to serial converters or whatever the heck they are, and the other chip, whatever the heck that does, I don't know. Uh, but there's been a lot of back and forth. We have videos from both manufacturers of this kit and from Funny Playing, you know, saying, my kit's better, here's why, and, you know, th there the videos themselves are, are pretty biased because, of course, they're going to say their kit's better. Um, you know, why why would you say the competitor's kit's better? That just doesn't make sense. Uh, so anyway, I've been telling a lot of people, you know, hey, don't, you know, if, if you're going to watch that video, just take it with a grain of salt because there might be, you know, they might frankly be lying about it. So instead of just building another Game Boy and putting them side to side, which I am actually doing right now, uh, before I do that, I want to test, I want to try and eliminate all the variables. I want to see, you know, is this kit more power efficient or is the funny playing kit more power efficient? Um, and then I want to put them head to head. But to test power efficiency, I'm going to use this Game Boy that I already have built. This is using a, uh, this console uses a V2 funny playing IPS kit. The plan is to leave it every single thing in this console as is except for the ribbon itself and then swap out the ribbon. But before I do that, I need to make some measurements um, with this kit, you know, just, just so I don't have to put it back together. Um, and then we'll make some measurements with a uh, stock screen, which I have around here somewhere. I misplaced it, but don't worry, I'll find it shortly. And uh, then we'll install this kit in here with brightness control and we'll compare the numbers that way. So first, let's go ahead and get this thing torn apart. I need... Oh, it was in there, whoops. My Y bit. So even though this console is already set up with the uh, funny playing kit, I still do need to get the back cover off to get my power meter hooked up. those aren't coming out. That's okay. And yeah, I am working on this concurrently as my, uh, well, I'm working on the other video, the actual install at the exact same time. At this point, I'm, at this moment, I'm just waiting for the shell to dry because I washed it literal soap and water and I can't exactly put it back together until it's dry. Okay. Last screw here is a GIS screw, not Phillips. It does make a difference. Okay. I'm just gonna try and set all these screws aside so I don't lose them. Eh, they're pretty well stuck in there, which is unusual, but that's fine. I'm gonna take these buttons out before I lose them. Okay. So we're going to test this at, and there's my cat. My phone must make some sort of noise as it records that my cat hears. 2.42 volts. I'm going to test it with Pokemon Emerald. This is a legitimate cart, uh, not a reproduction. And we'll do the same test with this cart throughout. I figure it should be a little bit more reliable than testing with a flash cart here. Move that off. 
How did that happen? I hate how sensitive this knob is. Okay, 2.38, that's fine. So we'll start off at low voltage or low brightness here. You probably hardly see it because of all the lights I have on. There we go. We'll go down to the overworld here. And in the outside at low brightness, we're at 184-ish milliamps. Bring that up to high all the way. And my Game Boy shut off, that's cool. I guess I need to clean the power switch on this. That's not, it's not very good. Or maybe the voltage dropped too low. This thing, this thing does struggle at the higher end here. Okay. So yeah, that is super high. At 2.4 volts, all the way high brightness, we're pulling 434 milliamps. So that's probably why it's shutting off because this thing struggles with the higher volts or the higher wattage but that's okay because it works long enough to get a number and then you can go from there I'll set that aside and let's take this apart oh i should boot up my soldering iron do that and is that my JIS? Yes, it is. I suppose while I have this thing apart, I'll take the opportunity to clean the power switch. But I'll do that after the video. Because something tells me that's not what, I, what you guys are here for. And of course I have Captain Tape on there. Let's get the tweezers. And before we try out the other kit, let's get a reading of stock. Where is my LCD? Actually, I suppose we don't even need it. We could just get the reading of this other kit and compare them directly. Yeah, let's do that. And so, just while I have them here, you can see the difference between the two kits. The layout of most of the components is completely different, uh, but especially when you get down here, uh, you have this one big chip versus one, two, three, four, and then this little one here, five. Uh, it looks like the rest of these are probably the same, but I don't know specifically what they do, so I can't really say. That's okay. And I don't recall which is which. This is the R button. I'm going to put that membrane back in there before I lose it. The membrane, that is. So 
So yeah, when you're watching the other video and you notice how I start with no solder on these points and then end with solder on these points, or continue rather, you'll know why that is. You get L and R backwards, it's really not that big of a deal, uh, except that your brightness control is just going to be backwards. You also do not have to wire up the ground wire. I assume it's just there for testing or something. do the cable management on this apparently but that's fine all right let's try it out get this thing down here again and I already completely forgot my numbers so I'm gonna have to play through this video again but that's okay that won't be too bad I'll kill the lights And I have no idea if we're on high or low, but that's okay. Well, actually, I can tell right off the bat that we're not on high, but I don't think we're on low is what I meant. Brightness, that is, yeah. Go all the way down. Holy cow, that gets really dark. I can't actually see that. Looks like the light's almost barely on. Either way, all the way down is about 205. Uh, I'll turn it one step up because that's slightly less ridiculous and it's about the same, 209. Let's crank it all the way up now. And yeah, at all the way at the top, or all the way up, it's only 314, that's 100 milliamps less. So, yeah, the not funny playing version definitely is more power efficient, I can say that much. Uh, but I don't think it's as bright. So, I don't know, we'll have to wait until I get the other kit built so we can compare the two side by side directly and see. Uh, but just right off the hop, I mean, I don't see any tearing, I don't see any dropping, everything looks good, but then again, so did the other funny playing kit, so I don't know. Uh, on that note, I guess I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here for now. Uh, I'll pick this up as soon as I get the other kit finished, but I still got to wait for the shell to dry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the funny playing kit in this console, and uh, redo my cable management and clean up the power switch and we'll go from there. I'll be back in just a sec. All right, so I finally finished up the build on this one. Well, not quite finished, but good enough for now. I still gotta get the back replaced on it, but you can learn more all about the build and the other video I made. Anyway, I've got the two side by side here. This one on the left here is the funny playing kit. Um, you just a full funny playing kit from funny playing directly. Uh, I'll link the build that I did for this one in the description here. This one on the other hand is that um, not funny playing ribbon. Uh, the LCD itself is from funny playing. Uh, the ribbon I got separate from the LCD because, well, I'll link that video too. Uh, but the LCD I purchased from Funny Playing as a spare in case I fucked up another install and then I ended up using it here. Uh, so the LCDs from the same vendor. 
the ribbons are different. Uh, the lens here is also from Funny Playing, even though, yeah. This is using a lot of funny, this one's actually using more funny playing parts than this uh, this console here, but that's that's besides the point. Anyway, I've got the same game, or close enough to the same game loaded up on both consoles. I've got Pokemon Gold here, Pokemon Silver here, but they have the same save, and they're at they're set to the same time within a minute. So the in-game uh, visual representation should be pretty much the same. Uh, I'm going to try and get these both centered in frame. It's kind of awkward because of how they're shaped. Um, it's easier to compare Game Boy Colors side by side, that's for sure. Anyway, the only light I have on right now is my desk lamp, and then my computer monitor is off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and kill the desk lamp just so we can get these side by side. And again, remember, left is funny playing, right is the uh, not funny playing. Um, let me, I'm going to set the brightness down to the minimum, and you can see it gets a lot lower than uh, this one. They're both at the minimum. Nice focus. There we go. They're both at the minimum. This one gets a lot darker, but this brightness setting looks pretty much unusable to me unless you're literally in a pitch black room. So I'm going to set that one up. Now, to me, these brightnesses look about the same. Um, if I had to pick one that looked brighter, I'd say it's this one. So let me bring that up one more step, and now this one's definitely brighter. So, mm, hard to say. On the low end, or on the high end, let's take a look. Funny playing one looks like it gets a lot brighter to me. Now, it's probably hard to see in the video, and for that I apologize, but it is what it is. It's kind of hard to measure brightness without the proper tool. Um, so the funny playing one has, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten steps. Yeah, ten steps. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten steps again. Uh, but honestly, this last one is pretty much useless, so we'll call it nine steps. Uh, well, I don't want to say useless, I just... It, it's the least useful. There, it requires a very specific situation. So for the funny playing kit, you get better, uh, better brightness on the high end, um, whereas on this one you get better brightness on the low end, I guess. Now let's... I'm going to bump these up one level here. We'll go in-game. Oh shoot, I'm not at the same place. Should be able to fly though. I think I'm in Viridian on the other one. There we go. Now I'm in the same place. I'm going to save that game. That's probably why this one had an extra minute on the save file. <laughs> okay. So, forgive me if uh, these aren't 100% in sync. Like I said, this is a lot easier to do with a Game Boy Color. But I want to show the same test that I do on the Game Boy Color here. If you look at the trees, it's easier to see if the uh, screen is uh, dropping frames or anything. The left kit is the funny playing kit. The right kit is the not funny playing kit. And when I was playing Pokemon Emerald, I think I did notice some frame dropping. And I am noticing it here as well, though it's definitely less frequent than the uh, all-in-one kits that I have done some videos on. I do not see it at all on the funny playing kit. So I'll try and uh, highlight what I'm seeing here, but I'm definitely noticing it on the right kit. And I'll put something in the description as well. Let me make sure the camera's focused. Okay. 
It's just easier when you have a uh, completely persistent background that doesn't really change and it's scrolling smooth. Oops, that was weird. Accidentally hit down. So yeah, I definitely do notice it here. Colors on the kits, it looks the exact same to me. Uh, well, it could be the angle, because I'm not looking at these at the exact same angle. I mean, they are both IPS kits. It also could be the brightness, because they're not 100% identical. But the brightness, or the contrast on this one, on the Funny Playing Kit, does look a little bit better to me. But this is just one game, one test. And it might be different at different brightness levels. So, I don't know. But either way, I think the Funny Playing Kit is the way to go for this. Let's try out... Um, now, unfortunately, I only have the one copy, so I'll have to do this one one at a time. Oh, actually, before I do that, I want to show you something cool about this kit. If you set it to low brightness, power it off, power it back on, look at that, it's still on low brightness. If you set it to high brightness, power it off, power it back on, it's still high brightness. So this is the not funny playing kit. We'll set it to one step lower, uh, but we're going to go ahead and boot up Super Mario Bros. And forgive me, I'm really bad at this game, but that's okay. So, on the funny plank, I should have done that one first. There's a little bit of artifacting along the bottom here. Oops. I told you I'm bad at this game. Uh, but that's okay, that's not the point. Come on, you can focus. There we go. There's a little bit of artifacting along the bottom bricks here. And not with this cloud, but with some of the clouds. I'll show you in a little bit. But... Oh god, this A button is horrible. It's not just me. I swear I'm not making an excuse. I gotta put a different membrane in this thing. Because the A, B button membrane is the one I swapped out for uh, an aftermarket one. But... Looking at the clouds and on the ground, I don't really see any artifacts. Oops. But if I recall correctly, in the other video I watched, there was one down here once you pass that level, or that area. But I didn't see anything just now. I'll have to review the footage and double check. Hell, maybe I'll even do some uh, fancy video editing and put them side by side. Don't get your hopes up. So I do still see a little bit along the bottom, but nowhere near as much as on the funny playing kit. And it's it's kind of difficult. This is one of those things that um, you have to look very carefully for. It's somewhat difficult to point out. Uh, but if you don't know what you're looking for, it's going to be hard to spot. Okay, now this is same game. And this is the funny playing GBA. So I should stop actually and uh, I swear that was intentional. If you look at the bottom here, along these bricks, you can see as it moves, there's this flickering, these lines right here. Now also take a look at the clouds. You see up here, there's this artifact that just takes forever to go away. Every time the clouds scroll. See right there? Um, did you see that when I crossed the gap at the bottom? There'll be another gap coming up in just a second. Ooh.
Even the text that, ooh. That was an accident, but it worked out, so it was okay. Uh, <laughs> the text at the top of the screen even seems to flicker a little bit. We'll see as the screen changes in just a second. Yeah, there's a flicker there. Yeah, it's hard to say. Now, these two examples, they are the most extreme examples. So don't misunderstand me. Don't think I'm, you know, talking mad shit about this, this kit saying, um, you know, it's basically, it's no good. That's not at all what I'm saying. Uh, what I'm saying is they both have issues. So those videos that uh, both vendors put out, I gotta tap the screen to focus, not that. Oh shoot, what'd I do? I don't think I just booted the game I wanted. No, I didn't. The, uh, I'm used, this is an EverDrive, despite what the case might look like. Uh, a legit one, not a, uh, not one of those clones from AliExpress. Zelda so GB. I don't feel like going to go find my DX cart, so we'll just use the EverDrive. Um, I'm used to the Omega menu where you hit start and it gives you your most recently played games. Whereas the EverDrive just boots up the last game. So, I've done this test before and I'll link the video bef uh, down in the description as well. God, I've got a lot of links to do. Um, but as the screen changes, you can see these posts just kind of like ghost all the way over across the top of the screen. Might be easier to see in slow motion. As well, this chain kind of flickers in place until the screen completely clears. Let's see if the other kit does that. See, now I could hit start. That's really washed out. So yeah, it looks like this kit has the exact same problem too. Actually it might even be worse, it's hard to say. Looking at the chain though, I don't see the chain flickering, I just see the ghosting from the posts. So, they fixed that chain flickering, I suppose. Should have brought this in closer. But I don't know that they fixed the ghosting for the posts. And again, this is, this is a real, like, worst case example here. And it's not a deal breaker whatsoever. These are, like, the two best slash worst games to, uh... To test because they're like the only ones out of the few thousand in the Game Boy Advance library when you count Game Boy Color as well that actually exhibit these issues that people have noticed at least. Um, one thing I think I mentioned during the uh, video I did for the Funny Playing Kit when I was testing this game, um, I'm not sure if this is an issue with the screen itself, the LCD, because ghosting seems to be a common trait for IPS displays. Uh, if that is a characteristic of the display itself, of course it's going to do that with this kit. The chain issue, though, that was something that... Uh, this guy's chain here, that was something that the Funny Plane kit in particular struggled with. Looks like this kit does not. So, I guess a verdict this video here, they both got issues, man. I mean, neither ne neither kit is perfect. They're both pretty good, though. I'm gonna go ahead and show this. I reviewed my footage and uh, put this into just a notebook here. So on high, the, br the power consumption of the Funny Playing IPS kit, 
was 434 milliamps on that Game Boy. It was super high. That is, like, ridiculous. Um, kill your batteries quick. But the brightness of the kit itself is higher than this kit. As opposed to this one on high, which is only 314. That's a lot less, but it's also not as bright. So it's hard to compare directly. Uh, you know, sure, one could look at these numbers and say, yeah, the the not funny playing kit is more efficient at maximum brightness. But that doesn't tell the whole story because maximum brightness isn't the same on both units. If we look at minimum brightness, it looks like the funny playing kit is actually quite a bit more efficient, even though very minimum is uh, pretty much off on this kit. I mean, just with my desk light on, you can barely see that. If I actually turn more lights on so that, you know, I can see more than just this circle in my desk, then yeah, you can't see that worth a damn at all. Um, so if we bump that up one level, you notice now it's at 209 milliamps versus the 184 of the Funny Playing IPS. So both vendors are saying a lot of things about their kits, all right? And uh, here's my two cents on the matter. The manufacturer that makes this kit for Game Boy Advance, it's okay. If you get it, it's not terrible. But from what I've seen so far, I prefer the funny playing one. Uh, if you're getting the Game Boy Color or Game Boy Pocket versions of the kit that this manufacturer makes, and yes, it is the same manufacturer, by the way, I did check. Um, I have a contact who works with the factory that makes these kits. Uh, they make both the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Pocket kits. Uh, if you're getting the Game Boy Pocket kit or Game Boy Color, get this version because it's more power efficient and, you know, it fixes that frame dropping issue. But if you're getting the Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Advance SP, presumably they're the same. Um, I don't have a GBA SP kit to compare directly. Both funny playing. The only reason I could think to go with this kit itself is if it's cheaper. And, uh, well, in that case, go for it. Knock yourself out. But one thing I got to say about the funny playing kit in particular is, uh, I don't, I don't know if this manufacturer includes screen lenses. I don't think they do. I can't judge because mine didn't come with one, but mine was an incomplete kit. So we'll disregard that. But Funny Playing does make extra screen lenses, not just like the silver. They make the gold text and it's pretty cool. They also sell pre-cut shells, which, you know, skips a big, big part of the install. Makes it a lot easier, especially if you don't have a Dremel or a rotary tool. Um, and they're like nine bucks. It's super good. Or at least it's super cheap. I haven't actually tried one myself. I'll have to play with it eventually. I guess I'll have to do one more Game Boy. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. If there's anything else y'all want me to test, please let me know. I'd be, I'd be very happy to test this out. But, like I said, unless there's some critical flaw that someone hasn't discovered with the Funny Playing Kit yet that this kit doesn't have, I'm thinking the Funny Playing Kit is the way to go. Uh, otherwise, I think I'm done for the evening. Thanks for watching, guys. You have an excellent night.